has to be uh, there has to be uh, use or to fix the damage caused by the hurricane. We will come to the determination. We can add all those sites in into a particular project. So yes, 90, 90, 90, 000 sites is an estimate. That's what we're working with. As to the what was the second one? The, that you have to agree on the um, on the repair costs. Yes, we have the October 2019 deadline. Uh, that's the deadline uh, that FEMA and the government of Puerto Rico have to agree on the fiscal estimate for all large projects. That have, be you, have you reached? No, not yet. No, that's the deadline. We're working on that. We are, uh, every single day we're working on that all the, through all sectors. Okay, and then one last question. Um, sure. You mentioned a third party that, um, that has been hired to watch over no, well, one of the one of the requirements uh, for the government of Puerto Rico, in addition to establish the uh, centralized oversight authority, it was to hire third-party experts that will help us manage the grants, uh, uh, the grant dollars. Uh, we, uh, I don't know if you remember, we hired Deloitte for the strategic advisory uh, financial and compliance part. We hired ICF for the break formulation and the grant claim process, and we hired uh, CEI for the data management. Well, last one, Mr. Vernon, my apologies, I got here a little bit late. Would you, you know, be obliged to maybe give a, a recap of what FEMA will be doing, you know, from now on in this transition? Sure, sure. Um, again, the what we're what we're doing is uh, we input, we had a process in place where we would be checking uh, uh, the work that was that was done to make sure that the receipts are there, the contracts are appropriate, and that the money is being, you know, in a nutshell, the money is being spent on what it was intended to be spent on. That's really because FEMA is at, at, at the foundational elements of FEMA is we're a reimbursement program. We're not a program that funds things up front and then spends. It's not like a grant program, like a HUD grant program, where it's it's the money's put out up front. Ours is reimbursement. So that being the case, we we're now handing that process off to Puerto Rico to manage for the Commonwealth and Court Three to manage that process without us having to do another review on top of that. And it's because of confidence that we built in our time working together, and because of the, because uh, they did go out to third-party experts, and they have, you know, really knowledgeable people that are going to carry this forward. So, so we're, we're excited that we've been able to do this. Uh, you know, the only additional thing that we'll continue to do, which we would do under any normal circumstances, is we'll do a quarterly check and audit on a percentage of it, just to make sure that uh, that it's compliant. And again, because I think Omar put it the best way. Uh, uh, we're, this is going to be a well audited program uh, because of the unprecedented fund amount of funds that we're going to do. We have confidence that we'll stand up, that all the work that we're doing together will stand up to whatever audit comes our way. Well, this set a precedent for future, for future FEMA interventions in case of disaster? Is it setting a precedent? Um, no, not, not really, because we've done this before. There's other, other states and applicants that we've used these procedures for. So um, it's not really going to set a precedent. Thank you. I'm sorry, I just want to follow up quickly. You said that the audit is going to be on a percentage of it, not in like a full audit. Just like what percentage then? Uh, you know, I'm going to let my audit team figure that out uh, because I, I want them to do it and I want them to have uh, things. But we can, we, we can get an answer to you in the details of that. Any other questions? Oh, um, I have a question regarding the base um, in terms of how many are going to be spent. Um, basically, the target initially to disperse the funds seemed to be quite um, at a faster pace. Now we're learning from the control board that they are questioning the speed or the pace of the funds. I wonder um, where precisely the, the difference between the board and the core three regarding the amount of money, how they're going to be allocated and so on? Well, I cannot speak uh, for the oversight board, but uh, as to this, as a 270, particularly for the majority of the sub-recipients that have been fully compliant with the process, they will be able to get 75% <clears throat> of any amount requested under an RFR within three weeks after they submitted the RFR. Uh, that's essentially, and then the 25%, the remaining 25% will uh, will uh, transfer it upon uh, finalization of the 100% compliance review. So that's how we're going to do it. And then per quarterly, on a quarterly basis, we're going to look at all sub-recipients to see how they're doing and to the extent any sub-recipients 
needs uh, additional technical assistance or additional uh, assistance in order to make sure that they're fully compliant, we'll do so. So it's going to be a process and we're going to be look at them every single quarter. And then FEMA will do a stress test of our process to make sure that it's uh, obviously uh, it's just, uh, being handled appropriately and in fully compliance with the law. And by the fact that remain indifference, because I can understand the case of 270, but the, just, I mean, the letter of the board says something like you're not necessarily identifying all the amounts that have been dispersed by FEMA. Which the letter? Fiscal plan. Um, that's the violation letter from last week when the board said that you were not registering me and the government. Um, the entire amount that, fam that FEMA has already dispersed to Puerto Rico and it's not reflected in the fiscal plan. Well, every every single dollar that has been dispersed to the government of Puerto Rico is fully disclosed in the transparency in portal. Plan? In the transparency portal, recovery.pr. Remember, Mike said 15 billion has been spent in in the Puerto Rico disaster yet. However, that entire amount has not gone through the Puerto Rico government of Puerto Rico. As soon as the disaster strike, FEMA have uh, many tools that they can use, and one of them is mission assignments, for example. They can extend mission assignments for the Cobra of Engineering for the restoration of electricity. Those funds will not go through the government of Puerto Rico. So what we disclose in the portal of transparency, when we talk about the $5 billion, for example, of the PA, that has gone through the government of Puerto Rico, through the reimbursement process, because obviously I have that, well, I have that data. Uh, because that's essentially the, our responsibility under the FEMA state agreement is to handle, obviously, the, pro the funds that go through the reimbursement process. So when I talk about the $5 billion of the PA, that's what I'm referring. The funds that went through the reimbursement process of, of, of the government of Puerto Rico. But I have to get, I have to get back to you on that, what, what you mentioned, because, again, every single dollar that has been received by the government of Puerto Rico has been disclosed. Is it, it is disclosed. Uh, that wouldn't make any sense. Awesome. If, if, I, if I could just add, add to that, you know, uh, the, the that fifteen billion dollar number, that, as Omar said, that includes mission assignment. Like for example, the costs that were incurred for the Army Corps of Engineers to support the restoration of power. These were significant amounts of money. Uh, but in addition, it also doesn't account for over about two billion dollars that was provided directly into the hands of citizens. You know, as part of the individual assistance program. So there is a lot of funding. The portion that we're talking about and that this, you know, the scope of this meeting today is about, is about that portion that's going through the, uh, the Commonwealth government. Awesome. Uh, one quick question, uh, just to make sure, because we have not escaped the movement of politics. What are you establishing here, regardless of... I think FEMA, the 55 billion is the locking amount of FEMA. That's essentially uh, represents the amount that they believe would be would have to be set aside for disaster Puerto Rico. But that's an expectation. Right now, under Section 428, we need to obligate that money through the fixed cost estimate process. So of the 55 billion that they're estimating, only 5 billion essentially has been obligated, which is the public assistance program. The remaining, we're working through the project formulation process, but they have to be obligated. But that's essentially what they believe should be set aside for that yeah. disaster. And so do you concur with that number? Do you believe it should be? Well, that, that's, the, they, they, that's a number. They have to do that. They have to do for every single disaster. For California, they have to come up with a number. So because that's the way they manage the disaster relief fund. So it's not a matter of if I agree with it or not. It's a matter that they have to come up with that number for each disaster. Right, but do you feel it's sufficient? For what yeah, it's sufficient mean? because it used to be, in the. if you look at the... If you look at the fis uh, fiscal plan certified in October, it was originally around 45, 40 or 45, and then it was increased because of the minimum wage increase that the governor signed uh, via executive order. So that had an impact, obviously. So it has to be revised. So right now, the last number it was around 55 billion. So that, that makes sense. And that is in line with the original estimates that we had in the Build Back Better.